This is Rinat Zarbaelo for InnerMind.org. I'm here with Scott, who is one of the artists exhibiting at Resolve. And apparently it's about resol resol resolving something, some kind of puzzle or, or, or uh, enigma. What's your take on it, Scott? Um, gosh, that's a good question. You know, to be perfectly honest, I uh, did the painting before I even really knew the title of the show, but I can sort of, uh, sort of ex post kind of find a reason why how my painting might fit in. Um, you know, I'm always trying to resolve issues as an artist, you know, conceptual issues like how uh, light might interact on various um, figures or components of the uh -huh. painting. Let's get closer to your painting, if you don't mind. And uh, sort of, uh, I think a lot of resolution takes place during that process. Um, I think that, you know, you also have to be, uh, have a certain amount of resolve to take an idea that you come up with and sort of see it through the end because there's so much frustration um, that, you know, comes with the process of completing a painting. So you have so to have it's a not, lot of resolve. It's not, a, it's not quite a joyful process like as you painting there could be frustration know. as well right you saying oh definitely there can be a lot of frustration but I, I, I'm not sure that this sort of a uh, I guess uh, doesn't exactly go together but sometimes that frustration can be pleasurable in some weird way because uh, there's a sense of accomplishment okay. um, and you know you have to do something with your days and uh, it might as well be something challenging and so you expect frustration when you do that now Scott tell me about this painting what's the title and what inspired you to make this particular one uh, the name of this painting is uh, half world um, Half World was an expression used for opium dens or um, bordellos in, you know, the 18th, 19th century. Gogol bordello? Uh, what's that? Gogol bordello? I'm just playing. Oh, okay, all right, sorry. <laughs> um, so this is like a, okay, so it's a, yeah, bordello, yeah, like yeah, I understand with the... It's sort of people that like sort of exist in sort of a half state of reality, like there's... They just had sex. They, yeah, you could say that. Um, there's actually a painting that goes with this that's not exhibited. Um, it's sort of a diptych and you see more to the story. There's an opium pipe involved. He's passing it to her. He's more of this malevolent force in her life. Um, and uh, you sort of have these people sort of, um, she's sort of half existing in this world where she's under his power and half existing in a world where she can sort of see herself from, from the outside. Um, and there's a certain amount of hope in that and whether or not she acts on that is, I guess, entirely up to her um, and not resolved in her mind. Um, but uh, uh, that's sort of why it's called, uh, the, word, the term half world sort of applies to this. I see. Now, um, do you consider this painting being related to the modern times? that we're going through nowadays? Well, I don't know. I mean, people still use drugs and lose themselves in adverse lifestyles, and so I, I think any anything like that would be applicable. People um, have the inability to sort of see their lives for what they are. I certainly know I do, so you can't recognize your own problems, and then there are these weird glimpses where you can see that, you know, things that you do are sort of uh, affecting um, sort of uh, how you live, and uh, and, and, and you hope if, if that's uh, if something bad that you can change it, um, and you hope for that power, that ability to recognize it and the power to change it. Um, and so I I think that that sense it would be universal. I see. Scott, what would you recommend for the up and rising artist who's just trying to break through, you know, into the gallery exhibition and everything? And how is the the concept of selling art, uh, you know, in your perception? Oh, what would my advice be? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, it certainly depends on what somebody would want. And uh, first of all, try not to spill wine at yes. an opening. <laughs> um, but uh, second of all, I mean, I don't know. For anybody that wants to go into realism, I think learning, um, you know, a lot of the principles and skills involved in sort of, you know, seeing real life and, um, and, and sort of translating that to canvas so that you can transmit feelings and stories to other people. Um, uh, so I think building skills is my best advice. As far as selling work, I don't really know um, that I have any real good idea how to do that. I just sort of make the paintings and hope that other people that have that skill set can take care of that. Are you success successful in exhibiting your art in uh, different galleries or you only stick to one gallery? Well, I have a main gallery that represents me called Cavalier Galleries in Nantucket and Greenwich and I've worked with them and had, you know, a solo show. So, um, you know, I've worked with them and, and that's gone well. Um, this was uh, uh, fun to be a part of, but, um, you know, I, I mostly just stick to uh, making paintings and I, uh, I really enjoy teaching too because that, um, I think, um, makes you a better painter when you have to explain your ideas. So that's sort of where my focus is. Is realism coming back oh, I think it's already in the contemporary back. art world and uh, how long has it been on the on the shore of the art world today that's a good question and I'm certainly not qualified to answer it because I sort of am a little bit of a hermit I just sort of hide out in my house but it just definitely seems like uh, you know not only is it coming back it seems to be back everywhere I walk I mean just I don't even live in Manhattan I live in Rhode Island but when I come to Manhattan and walk around all you see is realism I mean in varying degrees um, and very you know varying like sort of underlying philosophies but people are doing representational art um, I have no idea where it's necessarily going but I will say that like five six years ago you did not see it the way you see it now so it's many realistic paintings not at all what is art in your perception oh I guess it's just making uh, 
I don't know, uh, in some technical sense, it's about making artificial objects. In my uh, case, it's about making artificial things that are meant to represent other things. And for me, it's just a conduit to sort of um, storytell. Um, I, don't, I don't really think about any sort of lofty, high-minded art ideas. I just like painting. I always have. Um, and uh, I don't know. And I, I really like sort of narratives. And, and, and it just so happens that that's in some category called art. I see. A lot of artists nowadays migrate towards film. Yeah. You know, storytelling through motion picture. Sure. What's your take on it? And have you ever? I actually have. Uh, I, I started out as a film student. I made a lot of short films. That was my primary interest. And when I was about eight, uh, maybe 1920, I switched to painting. Um, and 1920s? You're that old? I'm a, I'm a 30 now. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, when I was, you know, about 10, uh, you know, years. Or 19 ago, years of age, or 20. When I was 19 or okay. 20. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm older than that. When, when it was in 1920. Oh, in 1920. Yes, in 1920, when I was uh, I am 33. 80 something years old. Yeah, yeah. I am. I know. I, I work out. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, when I was 19 or 20, I made films, and so I, I think that has always been a primary interest. And Were you painting at the time as well? Oh, yeah, I didn't take it all that seriously. When did you begin painting? Um, well, I've painted really since I was, like, really little. My mom and my dad, I mean, it's in my family. Um, I've always, like, sort of painted, and I've, I've certainly always drawn, um, but in a serious form, like, to where I wanted to make it a career since I was 21, 20, 21, so uh, eight or nine years. So for the past eight or nine years, you've been exhibiting in galleries and things oh, like no, that? Oh, no, I mean, the first, uh, I, I've exhibited in smaller formats, like, you know, like the local frame shop back home, but uh, in a professional capacity, I've been exhibiting since about 2006. And you also teach, right? I do, I teach at the uh, Grand Central Academy. I see, What's, well, what can you tell about that? The teaching experience, you know, because it's a completely different state of mind, right? When you're painting and when you're teaching, right? I mean, I think it's different, I mean, uh, it's it's alarmingly different act, actually actually like because Rebecca here is one of your pupils, right? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. She's uh, one of my star pupils. She's great. Star, star, absolutely. No. Um, right. She's great. She's uh, she's new to the school, but she's just hitting the ground running. She's great. But um, I uh, I would say that it, it's it's alarming uh, alarmingly different in that you teach these things, you teach these ideas, and it's your way of sort of summarizing the stuff you think about when you, you think that you think about when you work, and then you go back to your studio and you work and you realize you're not thinking about anything at all. You're thinking about an audiobook. You're thinking about like yelling at your dog barking. And so it's really forced me, it's actually made me a better painter because it's made me sort of uh, have to think about these things more seriously. Um, but yeah, I, I love teaching. It's great. It's really great. What can you tell about photography in modern times, such as, you know, the works of uh, David LaChapelle, for instance, uh, are you familiar with his work? I am, yeah. What like, do I think of his know, work? The way, the way, yeah, the way, you know, photography is becoming such, like, a, you know, it's, it's having a big spotlight compared to, you know, more traditional painting with brushes. Oh, gosh, I mean, I, you know, photography is just so different to me. It's like, uh, he's, I'm fine with he's it. He's using composition and, like, colors. Yeah, and, sure, you know, I he, mean, a lot of those things. It's not a moment thing. It's like he actually constructs the whole scene, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's fine. And I... I I don't even know, I can't really say with any confidence that I'm a fan of his work. I mean, it looks fine. Um, I don't know, I mean, I'm familiar with a lot of his celebrity work and it looks, you know, I mean, they look like good photos. I mean, I, I think that they're totally legitimate. Is it my, particularly my taste? I don't know, but um, uh, I have no qualms with it whatsoever. I do think that what I do doesn't really sort of overlap. Uh, and, well, actually, I'm sorry, it does overlap in many of those aspects that you talk about, composition, design, all that stuff is relevant. But, you know, you sit there, I mean, the bulk of my time is spent trying to conceptualize the form, imagine a light source striking that and rolling over that form so it feels volumetric. A lot of effort and time and study goes into that, successful or not. Um, and and, uh, and so um, when that occupies a majority of my time um, spent with this canvas, um, that makes me sort of feel like I have to distinguish it from someone who takes a photograph. A lot of other things go into taking a photograph that uh, I don't have to consider when I do this. So I think there's a skill, it diminishes their skill set and it diminishes mine by comparing them too closely. I see. Who is the god of art painting, traditional painting in modern times for you? Uh, probably myself. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's just different people that uh, have a major influence. Uh, on me, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd call them. Their a, name you can recall. Well, yeah, yeah. Q, Q, I, I, I wanted like, to make sure. I, I don't wish think, I could have come up with that idea. Or I like, I wish sure I could have. Know, make, well, yeah. I mean, uh, what, so I'll just tell you who has had well, probably the most impact on me um, professionally and just as a teacher. Um, and and it's, I, I don't want to call him a god because he's my boss and he'll think I'm brown nosing. <laughs> but uh, Jacob Collins, I think, is a very important artist. He's not only affected me, uh, we uh, impacted me. He's impacted so many people. And. Um, 
you know, before I ever started, when I was doing film in college, I saw a magazine with his artwork in it, and he made me realize that this kind of um, artwork from life, looking at a model, was possible. Um, and so, uh, to me, like he's meant he's meant a great deal. And another artist, I'll just say really quickly, who's personally meant a great deal, and, and he's really formed my way of intellectually thinking about painting, is Douglas Flint. He's a really good friend of mine. New Yorker? Uh, he's actually uh, he used to live in New York. He lives in Florida right now. Florida.